Hi, I'm Atul Ravindran. I'm the new chair of the FIMS QA group and I work for Digimetrics. I'm here to present the uh, quality QA app interface updates uh, for the FIMS project. So here I start. Uh, to give you an idea about what QA fits in the whole architecture, how we do it is like the supplier sends a file into the uh, enterprise and then we get it extracted and also we'd run tests on like the QA, uh, which will be like a test on the quality and the quality side of the, the file. Also we check in the metadata and those two are combined into a report which is ultimately outputted from the FIMS QA uh, software. So uh, based on the output of the report, uh, it can either be a pass decision or a fail decision and the pass goes into another workflow or the fa fail procedure can be re-given back to the uh, supplier for repairs. So that's the whole big picture of QA where f QA fits in. Uh, QA could also be like uh, a part of where uh, it's a process after the transcoding where you can check it. Also it can be part of an archival system where uh, system that's already there, a file that's already there can be checked for quality and can be resent back to the source for like recapture. Uh, why there's a need for automated QA uh, is that the file types of uh, the video files are increasing like on an everyday basis and a manual QA is good for like quality checking but not for like metadata checking and all that. Uh, Automated QA is very good at reading the metadata of the files, looking at conformances, looking at uh, whether the format specifies to the requirement. It could be a great match for, it could be in sync with the manual QA as well, where uh, there is a person who's looking at it and it could aid the person in letting him know that it's a complete structure which is like compliant. So. That's where automated QA is. The wrapper uh, for the codex, as I said earlier, is like increasing every day. It's a best case for automatic checking. As I said earlier, again, new formats are coming in every day. This can be added automatically to a workflow, which is like, which is a great advantage for a bigger system, a bigger enterprise where there is a whole lot of pieces together. QA fits in right in between where a uh, transcode operation happens and the output is actually sent to a distributor or a broadcast network. So this actually aids a operator in like uh, letting him know that it's a complete and correct file. A brief history about the FIMS QA asset. We started operation in like NAB 2013 and the need to standardize the operations is what started the whole project. There are a lot of QA vendors and everybody does the uh, process in a different format. Everybody has a different way of analyzing the file. Everybody has a different file format, which is not a great medium for like, if somebody wants to change the vendor in between, it's, it's not a great idea to have like different formats and different interfaces. FIMS QA is a great uh, initiative in that case where you know a vendor can be com made compliant and it's a mechanism where you know a vendor could be like switched uh, when there is a need to. So that was the beginning and that was the need to have this project. So FIMS members decided the need to standardize the QA interface. That's the whole purpose and that's the beginning. And it was started uh, by the business board by creating business use cases. And that was uh, in 2013 NAB. The group of users who initially started and who are actively part of the group is like the BBC, the RAI, IRT, NBC Universal, and these are people who regularly attend the FIMS QA meetings. And the scope of the business user involvement is to uh, have business use cases, which could be like ultimately trans translated into like APIs and it could be made into the FIMS QA uh, interface. 
as I said earlier, uh, we started operation in 2013, FIMS uh, NAB. So it's been a year and we have been having a lot of meetings and all that. And till uh, February 2014, uh, Vandan of Intera Systems shared it. And right now I'm the one who's sharing it. We have a mix of uh, operators and uh, business users and vendors. It's a good balance of having everybody. It's like a big group of users from BBC to like NBC and RA and Vidcheck and all that. About the goal of the FIMS project, it's uh, we're trying to standardize the interface for QC operation, which is not there right now. Even though there are a lot of different operators and different vendors, it's not a standard interface. So that is the main goal of this project, to increase the interoperability and to make the FIMS, uh, the QC applications plug into a higher level of the workflow by providing APIs. Right now, all the vendors probably have an API, but it is not a standard API, which cannot be like changed easily. You know, every vendor has a different method or a different interface. So what we are trying to do is like to de define a profile. There are three parts to it, a profile, the API, and the QA report. We are trying to make everything compliant so that it's easy to change the vendors. Also, what we are trying to do is like uh, the checks that is done by the QC applications, we're trying to standardize those as for the EBU QC library so that it, it's a wider group of checks which is like more standard. As I said earlier, the FIMS QA will provide a standard interface. It'll expose the capabilities of uh, around the analysis. Analysis would use a profile which is basically the setting that the QA engine would use internally. The output should be a FIMS compliant report again and it should persist so that the other FIMS uh, services which are built around or which uses the QA as a, uh, as a plugin could utilize the report what the QA provides. FIMS, the, one of the objectives that we have is that the FIMS QA should analyze the structure uh, and wrapping of like uh, files such as MXF, GF, GXF and all that, which is like mostly like a playlist, but it should analyze even the assets inside the playlist. So that's one of the goals. The other goals we have set is that the FIMS QA should analyze the compression attributes, including the syntax violation and the stream analysis and all that. Analysis of essence attributes, including FIMS, uh, including frame rate, aspect ratio, color gamut, uh, luma chroma values, and bar tones and checks. All of the QC vendors right now probably have these in the checks, but these are not standardized. So one of the goals is to standardize all the tests based on uh, a preset check based on the EBU QC. Uh, the other goals we have is that analysis of audio essence, including audio sampling, bit depth, bit depth and loudness levels. Also one of the goals is like it should be able to run on localized on a full spectrum of the file. Continuing with the objectives, API should have a mechanism to advertise the, mech the capability of the QA system. This is very important because Whenever a QC system is in place, it probably would not conform to all the tests that it supports. So there is a need to like advertise the capability so that the system that's using it should be able to read it and understand what it's capable of and should uh, be able to use the QA system if it complies with it. That is the objective uh, that we have over here, which says you know the API capability should be should advertise uh, the predetermined analysis profile. The quality metadata collected should utilize uh, and extend where the FIMS object model uh, so that the other FIMS uh, services can utilize it downstream. This is one of another major requirements of the FIMS QA so that it plugs in with the other FIMS architecture so that, uh, such as the trans, uh, the other FIMS uh, services as a transform, transcode and all that. Ability to create and persist multiple analysis profiles is another requirement that we have set, which, which lets you like utilize the same profile for like different tests so that you don't have to create, create a profile per check. Close collaboration with the EBU QC, as I said earlier, for like extensibility. Uh, going through the numbers for the FIMS QA, we started the project in like NAB 2013. 
we have had like 21 web conferences till now, uh, two face-to-face -face sessions, in one in like New York and one in Geneva. Uh, we have spent around 131 man hours totally talking about the interfaces and discussing with different business users. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort because it's a different set of uh, users that come into the play. Everybody has a different requirement. Everybody needs uh, their own uh, parameters to be in the profile, so we are trying to accommodate everything so that it's widely accepted. Uh, talking about the project updates, we are right, right now at the technical analysis stage of it. Uh, we have completed the business use cases. We have had like requirements sent from like different business users such as BBC, RAI, IRT, and NBC, and uh, we have gone through that in the web conferences. We have had like discussions over discussions on like what goes into the profile and what the QA structure is, QA report structure is going to be. What we have not discussed till now is the API calls, which would be like which would come in the technical analysis set of it, and we are currently in that phase. So that uh, we're trying to create a s simple format which supports everybody, so that it's a little slower right now because of the huge number of vendors and uh, the different uh, groups that are trying to like create the profile and have their metadata and uh, other stuff in it. Uh, after the technical analysis, what we're trying to do is like we'll create a design pattern and a operational WSDL so that it's there and the structures are defined. It'll be a first stepping stone to create the API structure. And once that is done, we'll go with the implementations and the rest implementation so that it can be done into an application that people can start testing. Once the test is done, we'll create the documentation, which will clearly put in stone that the what the exact metadata uh, uh, sorry exact methods and API calls are so right now we are in the technical analysis and it took almost a year to finish this but I think going forward it should be easier as the major part of the business use cases what the was getting the requirements set and that is complete right now QA interface definition, uh, what it would do right now is that the, it, the plan is to analyze and get the metadata extraction done and the report done. That is to create an interface for that, to create everybody, to take into consideration everybody's requirements is a big task. We are planning to do that. Uh, we are also planning to analyze uh, the container and the settings to do the real analysis would be set in a uh, profile which would be a standard for doing for different QA vendors and we are planning to do that. We are also planning to implement a QC uh, interface for the QC report which could be like uh, which is which is going to be very interoperable. We would be able to swap QC reports from different vendors so that everybody has a easy way of looking at it and what they know they know what they're looking at. If, if the structure is the same for all the QC reports from different vendors, it'll be a big use case, it'll be a big improvement for the other people who are like reading the files, you know, so that they can easily come and get the data what they're looking for in the right place. This, as I said, will also provide a mechanism to expose the capabilities of different QA mechanisms, QA vendors, Again, everything comes into place where there are like multiple vendors and with multiple capabilities. We are trying to uh, streamline everything into like a set format so that it's very interoperable. What, would, what we are not planning to do right now is like to create profiles on the fly, which is like a phase two task we are, we are planning on. Also, we wouldn't have any complex notification mechanisms. We think that the FIM uh, QA would be like a system which will write a report and some other higher level service would come and read the report from that. So right now, there is no plan to implement a, a mechanism where it would go ahead and let the service know that the task is complete. The service would have to call uh, the QA report and see whether it's complete. Also, we're not planning to provide any interface for the user applications. Uh, this would be like an enterprise uh, interface where the QA vendors would utilize it to become SWIMPS compliant. Uh, 
uh, giving a high level overview of the FIMS interface. As I said earlier, this is like the FIMS QA profile, which would be derived from the FIMS profile. Uh, again, that and the container would be fe fed to the analysis engine, which would be a vendor specific engine, which is like, which is going to be FIMS compliant. If it's a FIMS compliant vendor, that vendor should be easily, uh, should uh, interface with the FIMS profile and should be able to do all the tasks that is, that is advertising. Once it, adver uh, once it does the task that's advertising, it'll write a FIMS QA report, which would again be a common report, which can be like uh, supplied so that the other, re other users, which are at a high level, can read the QA report easily. All the data and all the interfaces would be at the right place so that it's easily interoperable. That is the ultimate goal of this. Uh, coming from the last slide, there are like three functions. There's a FIMS QA profile, which is going to be the settings. Then there's the FIMS API functions, which again is going to be like uh, functions to add the job and do, to do the job management basically, to the pause the job, to delete the job, and to get, retrieve the report. Once we have the API functions in place, uh, a vendor should be able to like implement these and like it should be able to a uh, high level service should be able to swap the vendors if they really don't like the vendor. So that it's very interoperable. Also the QA report would be FIMS compliant once it's complete. And this would enable other users to uh, extract the data easily from the Q QA report, which is not right now, which is not possible right now because of the different vendors and different formats. They'll, uh, Going with the inter interface design, there's going to be an orchestration system which is going to give the FIMS profile and the FIMS QA interface would output the FIMS report to the system. Again, this will be a polling as it won't, uh, it won't let any users know once it's complete. Uh, the FIMS QA design considerations that we have right now, we are planning to implement the API in like the SOAP and the rest so that it, it covers most of the software architecture right now. All of the people in the industry probably are using the SOAP and the rest. So it'll be available for a wider audience. Uh, we're planning to have a similar interface for the vendor system so that it's, uh, it gets used pretty easily. If it's a complex system, we don't think we'll have like a lot of users implementing it. So one of our requirements is like this interface should be very simple so that other vendors can quickly implement the same. We're also uh, planning to provide cu custom credentials so that if there is a uh, requirement for authentication and all, it'll support it. Challenges, I think, moving forward is like, as I've been repeating earlier, it's like a different uh, set of rules for the QA because it's a lot of vendors with a lot of uh, different formats and standards as it's been a wild west right now. So we are trying to make it like simple and um, common, so that's one of the things that we're trying to do. We're trying to standardize the metadata and the schemes that we use so that it has a wider audience. Also, creating profiles on the fly, which is a phase two uh, task, is going to be complex. As the system uses different kinds of inputs, it's going to be like a complex thing. That, that's one of the challenges that we think we have. Uh, other challenges, Again, it's, it's bringing everything into one umbrella is going to be a big challenge. I think I'll, I'm coming to the conclusion of the slides, so thank you.